All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're going to be taking a look at Ramp back to Planeswalkers because we did a Soul Tide Planeswalkers list a little while back. And my boy Swayze was also working on a list like this. And when you put the two together, I think we get something really special. So let's go hop in and see how we're going to be crushing opponents today. And I'm thinking some of you might want to play this at your FNM, which means you're going to need paper cards. And if you're going to buy those, check out CoolStuffInc.com. They are the sponsor of the channel. You can save money shopping over there. You can use code DRAGON, take 5% right off your order, and you'll be supporting me directly while getting something cool for yourself. You can also get other cool nerd things there. It doesn't have to be magic. But remember, they always have cool stuff in stock. All right, so going down the list, let's talk about how we're going to be ramping up. We're going to be playing Dig Up. Now, that's not particularly ramp, but it does make sure that we can get the lands that we need. Then we are playing Azusa's Mini Journeys because it lets us put a land into play for free so we get an extra land. Also gives us some life gain. Not so much of a big body, but that's okay. We're going to be playing a copy of Celestis as well. This is another way to ramp up and possibly gets us more cards. The other big card we're going to be ramping with today is Awaken the Woods. We've played this in a few different lists just because the mana is nice, but also getting extra bodies, and they count as forest. And why that's important is because we're also playing Nissa Ascendant Animus. We did this in a few lists, and we know this combination of cards is good. If you can get off Awake in the Woods, and those creatures live, and then you play a Nissa, it's just game over in back-to-back -back turns. One big one-turn kill. But if we're going to be getting all this mana, we can also do some other fun things. Because we do have Invasion of Zendikar, which also can get us from 4 to 6 mana, unlocks a lot of things especially if we draw a seventh land off the top we do have teferi getting to use this is great getting extra cards getting a body matter of fact this combos with another card in the list that's very good and we're playing silver scrutiny so if you actually end up getting a teferi out and getting the two two then you draw say three cards well now you have a big creature and teferi is going to be very hard to kill Additionally, we're going to be playing a copy of Vraska Betrayal Sting because it is removal, but it just keeps pumping our Planeswalkers as well and getting us cards. And if we're going to have all the mana, we might as well go stupid and just play Breach the Multiverse, right? We get to put stuff in graveyards, we get to pick from the opponent's yard and ours, and we're almost always going to have a good Planeswalker to pick from, so that's good enough. And then just to buy us some time, we're going to be playing Gix's Command, along with some other removal and spot cards here or there. But you get the idea of what we're doing today, and I think it's going to work. And don't forget, if you want today's deck list, it will be at the end of the video. We'll talk about what we learned from today's games and if we want to change anything. And if you just want to download the list, it's down in the description, like always. It'll take you to our Moxfield link. And there you can get today's list and all the others that we played throughout the season. So y'all go enjoy these games. Grab a drink, because these are probably going to be good. And then I'll catch you on the back end of the video. All right, we're going to keep this. I don't know if it uh, goes any better or worse from here, but let's find out. I probably could have got away with playing this on one because I wasn't going to do anything. But the way we drew the lands, it all kind of works out. So we'll go ahead and play this. And then we'll put this into play. So not bad, not bad. Decent start so far against Mono Black, it appears to be. So I'm going to what I feel like is reasonably assume they're probably holding a lot of removal things and they're not going to do much to artifacts and enchantments so I think we can kind of just do this however and then that still leaves up Shieldred's Edict and then if nothing happens we could just try to draw like three cards next turn Shieldred let's kill a Shieldred or, more specifically, have them sacrifice the shielded. Okay. I kind of... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. If we were to find a land, we'd have six, then seven. So, we probably just want to do this now. To see if we can find a land. Preferably two. Okay, we did. And that works out even better because we get to play that tapped. Archfiend of the Dross. We don't like that. Uh, let's see. Can I play that? Play a land, get rid of the Archfiend, and do nothing else? Uh, does this get rid of the one with the highest power? 
Just trying to think about how we die if we, we take this turn to just play Breach instead. But I think we're going to go for it. Excellent. That worked out nicely. Go to our opponent's graveyard. We will get a Shieldred. Oh, we could get a Phyrexian Obliterator, though. Uh, Do we care? No, nah, let's get a Shieldred. All right, our graveyard. We got that. All right, cool. Let's get rid of that duder. That was a strong turn. Strong turn. Like here, even if they have kill spells, then we just start going ham with Nissa next turn. Getting rid of our Planeswalker makes sense. So now we still have Gix's command to get rid of stuff that'll be in the way. We can Nissa to just make piles of bodies. Guess what? We're psyching that. That's cute if we just want to set up a big thing, but I think the bigger play, since we don't want them flipping that, is to just go ahead and do this. Make them psych. Actually, hold on. What do we have in our yard? Uh, nothing. All right, just checking. <laughs> sacrifice, opponent sacrifice the biggest thing, and we'll just give our thing plus one, plus ones. Why not? Get in there. I'm gonna just play that with no lands to play. And opponent scoops. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep this. It seems serviceable. Go ahead and play that and pass. Yeah, you'll probably hear all types of little fireworks in the back. I apologize for that. Uh, you know, it's just that time of year. They do have some blue mana. I think I'm just going to end the turn. I wanted to, like, Awakening the Woods for one, but that feels kind of weak. I feel like we could sneak it through later and get a little more value, potentially. If we try it for two, I mean, at least we get them to counter something here, right? It's kind of the way I'm looking at it here. Just let them counter. And maybe it lets our Planeswalker survive. I doubt it, but maybe. Okay, that's something. Uh, we have to spend five for some Planeswalker action here. I mean, we could spend four for this. Oh, we don't have double black, actually. That's a problem. I guess we just go get a land? I mean, why not? We'll go get another swamp. And then we just end the turn. They flash in Wandering Emperor here. Nope, they're gonna go Memory Deluge. Sure. Opponent's just passing. Yes, yeah, so this is just gonna be kind of boring, y'all. This is very much silly control fights. Sorry, I'll have to sit through this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can do this for one, two, and leave up two mana so we can't get make disappeared. I guess that's fine. Not ideal, mind you, but it's something. Resolve. Just gotta take our time with it. All right, so here we're gonna Jace, or at least try to kill Jace. Your mind to will. 
So they're going to mill that many. Let's go ahead and have them sacrifice Planeswalker. If they counter, though, we have a real decision to make on if we just breach or... Okay, they did make disappear. Fair enough. I don't know if they're trying to mill us out or what, but we're going to find out. Let's go ahead and get the breach off. <laughs> well, our choices are a Teferi. Uh, Potent's Graveyard. We can get their Jace. I'm kind of down with that. So let's make a dude. And then let's mill the opponent. And we'll draw some cards. Which gives us a bunch of triggers. All right. So we at least get to start moving things forward here. We have 20 cards, they have 30. So we could get milled out pretty easy if we're not careful. All right, lay down arms. It's gone. I think we have to be really careful because if they have another Jace, we could die. Like, we, we don't have much choice here. All right. That's intriguing. So, this would get 10 cards. Opponent goes to 20. Jace would have 9. So, it's only 29. They would draw and then have to kill us. And we'd have nine cards, and they could draw Jace and kill us. Oh, that's so funny. That is so funny. Um, actually, they could just minus their own Jace. Um, wow. Not completely sure what I want to do here, if I'm being real. Um, let's try to kill Jace. It feels kind of important. Or else I don't think we can ever get Breach off and have it do what we want it to do. Alright, let's have the opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker. Okay, let's give this minus. Let's make a body. Okay. Is meant to be shared. Try to keep us enough cards that we don't die to a random Jace on their side of the battlefield. And then now we can Jace for 12. Oop. Do they have back-to-back -back Jaces? If so, they get us. Yep, yeah, they might have got it. Have another one? Oh, they don't have another one. Wow, okay. We're at three. Three cards. Let's try... Put them in 19. I. This is tough, because I kind of want to Jace first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. I think we just do it. Actually, wait. If we got 10, they'd have 19 left. So Jace actually won't get them. That's 12. It's going to leave them with 7. Ugh. Yeah, we need them to not have another Jace. We also only have 3 cards. Uh, so we can't use our own Breach here. Unless we're going to go for it on that turn. That's tough. Alright. Alright. All right, we're just trying. This is all we can do. Seeing what we can get out of this. Sure, you got it. Now, we could gamble here and draw one proliferate would pump Jace we could have enough to not die. No, we're just going to do this, you know? Well, 
Like I thought about it, just said, nope, we're, this is what we're gonna do. If they have a way to get us to draw cards, we just die. They're at 28. We can do 15, 25. Still can't kill them just yet. Oh, no, no. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. Nah, we wouldn't have enough. I was thinking if we Vraska and then we have one, two, three, four. We don't only have five left, though, or six. It's not going to be enough. All right. I don't think they have a way to mill us, though. They would literally have to draw Jace, I'm pretty sure. Strike fast and strike hard. Yeah, that's fine. Nissa gets hit. <laughs> like, not really going to fight over that. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, make another body, I guess. It's nice to see a familiar face. Go ahead and... Hmm, again, check count 26. That's 10, that's 15. Still not enough. Uh, we have one card we can draw. If we want to go that route. Uh, off that. Get rid of this. Alright. We we're going to have one card left next turn to try to kill the opponent. And I feel like I already messed this up somewhere along the way, but here we go. They have a Sunfall. That's okay. Because we can also kill that if we needed to. All right, this is kind of it. Uh, opponent has 25. So we can minus Jace for five, because this also gets 10. Assuming this even works, they could have a counter to the breach and then none of this matters, but here we go. If not, we got there. I don't know what that is. Oh, they're bro fisting? Is that their good game emote? Looks like it. Sure, we'll get another Teferi. I mean, I guess I'll get a reset Nissa. <laughs> Bonin's Graveyard. Uh, I guess I'll get their Jace. Or actually, no. Hold on. <laughs> I'll get their Wandering Emperor. That makes more sense. All right. Not that it matters. I mean, I pass the turn and that's game. So, unless they have a way to put cards in their library, which, you know, possible. All right. Let your blade do the uh, not going to draw a card, so we'll just pass. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll take it. Ooh, what do we do with this? I think we have to... Well, do we mulligan this? Yeah, probably. If I had anything there, I probably would have kept it. Let's keep this... I'm going to scrap... Wow, am I just saying Nessa here? Also, you know what's wild? Like, I'm not so worried about like the fireworks I hear going off. It really just bothers me. It makes me sad when I hear like... The birds that are freaked out flying by are like people's dogs not doing well. Alright, we need to draw a land for real deck. Back to back lands would be even better. Because if not, I don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot of anything. This guy, look at the top six. You can take a land and put it in your hand. All right. Has a defender otherwise. These are not what we're looking for, but I guess they'll give us life to stay alive in the meantime. What is this guy? It's Reach... 
Equip oh, it's equipment. Gives okay. I forgot this was even a magic card. Like, not even exaggerating, y'all. I truly forgot that was a magic card. All right. Now, the good news is, is when these become blocked, we actually get to untap three lands, so it might be a way for us to get access to more mana on a turn. Oh, they're doing some type of training grounds combo. I don't know what it is yet, but... So, turn to our creature with the fitting has... Oh, so you can play use that ability for free to get like this... Something else attack as a 1-4, deal damage with his toughness. All right, I see what you're doing. I see you. That's cool. I respect it. Kind of a cool little idea. I'm into it. Back up, get to put a counter on something. All right, so you have a 5-5. Five, five. Sure, I think we just take it. Oh no, that is not what we needed. A land was going to be critical here, especially with Nissa being able to stop all their things. Ah, oh, bruh. That hurts. That hurts a lot. Dang. That, oof. Oof, that sucks. Yep, now you put that on something and attack for a big ol' amount here. Get an attack for seven. This is really a janky deck, but I, I'm digging it. <laughs> like, this is kind of cool. Fortunately, we've gained a lot of life here, so it's going to make this hurt a lot less. But yeah, we just take seven. This is cool. I ain't mad at you, opponent. That's kind of sweet. All right, make them sack a non-token creature. Probably just going to sack their O2, because that's what I would do. Yep. Why do I get the feeling they're probably going to, like, untap their creature if I try to attack? Please don't have a counter. Oh, they definitely have a counter. <laughs> yep, there it is. To be fair, we haven't done anything to make them counter anything along the way. Alright, let's see what else they got going on here. I don't even remember what this card does either. This is cool. Modified creatures you control attack as though they didn't have defender. Okay, legit. Uh, I think all three just go blocking. I mean, it makes the most sense. Oh, there we go. Whew, I was getting concerned. All right. Destroy that. No attacks. All right, we weathered the storm for a minute here. All right, they're going to get rid of that, which gives us a land, which isn't terrible. Uh, let's see what we've got. We have two blue, two. We already have multiples. All right, let's grab another forest then. All right. So they only have one real creature, but nothing that can attack. Oh, that, those attack. Duh, they're 2-2 two -two still. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. All right. Evasion of Zendikar. I think we just do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think we can do this for... Have it be a 6. And Yeah, this is fine. This is more than okay. Hopefully they don't have a way to get rid of a big guy. Alright, they're not even attacking, so we love that. Get that, get that. Plus one. And pass the turn? Nope, you know what? 
sure. Let's see if you want to block. I don't know what that card is in your hand. We're about to find out. All right. End the turn. At some point, if I don't overrun, I really need to be using Nissa to get rid of training grounds. All right. Sure. Just attacking us straight up. Makes sense. All right, we're at five. They probably put this in some kind of danger range that I don't know about. But, you know, feels like the cost of doing business. Attack here. Because we can always use Ottawara to bounce something. And I think they need their bulwark. Yeah. So that's enough. Actually, I just realized I had enough to just kill them on that turn. I didn't realize I had that many fours. So I have four is eight. So we get an extra eight there. Each of these is 13. That's 21. I guess it wouldn't have killed them. They could have jump blocked, actually. It would have been 13 plus eight. So, all right. I guess I was still fine. We would have killed them the following turn. So that works. Sadly, with no blue lands, this is an easy mulligan. This one's much better. I'm going to keep... I just don't know. Hmm. I feel like I'm supposed to just get rid of the swamp and try to be greedy with the Teferi for later in the game. Now, if I never draw land, I'll hate myself. But, yeah, it is what it is. Though, we can go ahead and do this and get land now, so that's fine. Go ahead and get an island. Uh, is it not going to let me select the island? There we go. What you got? What you got? Herd migration. Oh, so we're playing against that. Okay. I don't know if that's a good or a bad matchup for us. I mean, we don't have counters for what they're trying to do, but we do have ways to get rid of Atraxa, which is the big problem. With Terra Sunder and Shieldred's Edicts, so it's not the worst thing. I feel like I'm going to go ahead and just do this for one. Like, and if they just want to kill a creature, sure. Because they're not doing anything else productive. Like, I could have waited and done it next turn, so maybe we can do a breach on the following turn, but, you know, opponent looks like they don't have much here. Anyway, let's go ahead and get a Teferi down. And I'm just going to draw a card, actually. Not even make the 2-2 two -two here. Mostly because it makes it harder to kill a Teferi if they just, I don't know, might be playing Lightning Strikes or something. All right. So far, nothing in the yard to reanimate, so we're not freaking out about anything just yet. Do we want to go invasion? I think we do. So let's do that. Let's invade. Let's get forest... Forest. Let's make a 2 2 this time. Nobody knows the past better than me. Let's attack here. All right. We have everything to do everything next turn. They have an invasion, so probably an Atali incoming. Assuming they have a seventh land. But, uh, yeah, we've kind of got a lot of options here. Ooh, Awaken the Woods is a good one here as well. Though, I think if we can just get an Atraxa from them, that probably puts us toward ending this thing sooner. So, I say... This thing has haste on the back, right? Tap for any color. So, I go one, two, three, four, five. So, we could just do this, do this. That comes into play. We go ahead and breach. 
We'll get an Issa. Opponent's graveyard. Get one of their Traxxas. We will take a Breach. A Land. Alright. That didn't really matter. Alright, this one's a little tough, but we're going to keep it because I just want to see what happens. I think generally I would consider mulliganing this one, not having a double blue or even having green for when we get to that. But we do have time. You know, there is that. Okay, that's the card. Doesn't particularly help us, but it is a card nonetheless. Kind of looking, hoping for a green land here, actually. So an untapped green source, we can just awaken the woods for two. It's probably our best bet right now. Or if we get a blue land during their instep, we'll try to draw a couple cards. I think are kind of our two keys here. Well, they are playing Sunfalls, though, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, we could just kill this guy, too. I feel like we might as well. Yeah, why not? It's a uh, pay to get rid of this because we got to make something happen here. Okay, that's a start. They have a tapped land. I don't know if they have any other land, but we'll see. Hoping that's all they have is to just play that tapped and then we get this Nissa going. Or we get an untapped land, like one or the other. That still allows us to get Nissa down, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, could have been worse. We'll take it. And we'll just plus up Nissa. And then now, if they do get a soul Sunfall, we can at least just make them sacrifice it or whatever. Oh, they're making a sacrifice of Planeswalker, though. That sucks. Well, we tried. We did what we could, folks. We did what we could. Okay, we got the other blue source, though, so that's good. Uh, just going to attack with these so we can get more cards with this. Uh, it's Flash if it's three or less, though. Do I want three cards or I want four cards? I think we want four cards. So we're just going to do it on our turn. Okay, that's fine. We take three, and then we'll just go ahead and do this now. Okay. Uh, Awake in the Woods, not necessarily the card we're looking for, but yeah, it's all right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a Wandering Emperor somewhere in our future, right? So we could do this for two, and then steal one, two, three. Do the other scrutiny for three. All right. Let's get in here with this, see what's up. Assuming Wandering Emperor. Yep, there we go. Finally, I'm home. Sure. Let's go ahead and kill that. I mean, at this point, we're trying to just beat them on outvaluing them more than anything else. Just like, can we get more creatures, more this cards? Is what you get for hurting uh, wait, Arena, it tapped my blue mana? Why? Why in, at all? Oh my goodness. You're kidding. Why? 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 There's zero reason. Oh. Okay, I guess we just... For three, I don't know. That's so brutal. I mean, they probably Sunfall or something here. Or Farewell, but... Ugh. Okay, that's fine. We're not too worried about that. Jeez, that's... That's... Awful. One, two, three, four. Just doing this, so if they have another sweeper, we see the other one right now. Get it out the way. 
Kaya. Okay. A whole legion of enemies. Ooh, I love the chat. Not what we were looking for, but this will do. Let's make you sacrifice that Kaya. Let's play probably a full-size Vraska here. Could I do a full-size Vraska and still tutor? No, I could do a lesser one. One, two, one, two, three, four, and then still Vraska. No, I don't have enough black mana for that. I need three. Uh, okay, let's just do full-size Vraska then. We'll draw a card. Sure. Whoop. There we go. Play a land. Attack. All right. So now we can go find a card we want. We can also scrutiny, sunfall. You get a thing. That's fine. That works. We'll just get rid of that. Save ourselves the hassle. Of actually, we can wait until they activate it, actually. Ooh, that's nice. One, two, three, four, five. And we can still tear us under? Sure, assuming Arena leaves us green mana, which it did this time. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and make a two-two. In the turn. Awesome. We would like to get rid of that. Excellent. 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 Oh, they're going to get to kill Arta Fairy. Oh, no, they actually don't get to. That's a whole different thing. Fair enough. Let's... What do we want to do? We could... Hmm. That's just a one, but it will get bigger. So I have to decide what's worth doing here. Like, even if we go find something, we'd have to attack Vraska. So, I mean, Kaya. Hmm. And Kaya can minus three to do that again. Okay, let's do this. Let's get rid of this thing. Because I don't really care that we're giving them mana. Let's minus this. And then we're going to draw a bunch of cards. One, two, three, four, five. So then those get bigger. We get a bunch of counters on Teferi. We get to play a land. And pass the turn. All right. Sure, you got it. Okay. Is that even... Do they even have any counters? Like, I'm not sure. They might just have that in there because it's a black-white land. I don't think I'm going to play afraid of that. Uh, do, 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 do. I was looking to see if we had maybe some other way to get rid of the Kaya, but it doesn't look like we do. So, the next option is probably just Nissa. Like the next best thing we can do. I mean, if they kill us here, they kill us. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just willing to eat it at this point. We're gambling. Alright, taking the risk. Wandering Emperor. That's going to make it really, really difficult. Yep, they're going to be able to protect that much better now. Though, I say that. We do have Gix, so that's Gix's command, so that's fine. 
Not the one I necessarily would have got rid of, to be honest. But that works for us, I guess. Yeah. I have got new moves to teach you. You got it. I can taste your fear. Okay. So we can get a creature out of the way. We can can we draw any extra cards? Hmm. Going to four feels kind of dangerous here, so I'm not sure how badly I want to do that. But actually, I say that. We can gain life here, so I guess it's fine. Let's do that. Let's have the opponent sacrifice a creature, and we will put counters and lifelink this. Then we will go to four, makes this a seven. We can just outright kill Kaya, then this blinks. I guess that's fine. Sure. There's also a chance we get to draw cards from something else, but it uh, didn't happen. Just thinking about how much life we can get here. I just realized I did that wrong. I could have played uh, Azusa and gotten extra land down first and then done that. But either way, let's draw. There is much the past can teach us. Let's plus. Let's take out Kaya. All right. Farewell, sure. Show them the edge of your plane. We must protect the people. Well, that's something. <laughs> All right, let's uh we could take an extra turn. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to their hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle. All right, so let's go ahead and plus, and then we'll just minus to fairy. All right. So they get to pick one thing, and then everything else is going to get shuffled up. And admittedly, the downside is I have to make a bunch of tokens here, or else I can't really ever punch past that. So I'm just going to play this full size so I can have two tokens or we just never get ahead. Not easily anyway. Then we play this. Uh, play this. Play this. There's probably no more lands to get. All right. I got 21 cards left too, so I don't have that much time to waste. All right. We knew that was there. We can also still overrun with some very large creatures, but because we do have five uh, forest. Uh, is the opponent just going to let us do a thing here? Because that's 10 and 17 is 27. Uh, I feel like this is a little bit of a trap. Yeah, okay. They they saw it too. Alright, let's keep it. I said that with all the enthusiasm in the world, but I really can only play two spells in my hand, potentially, right now. Alright, let's get this down. And then hopefully we find another blue or black source, because we're going to need those pretty badly. Another blue source would be preferred. We'd rather have cards, I think, in this matchup. But we'll see. I think we're going to go ahead... Ooh, it's a Dark Slick Shore. So that sucks. All right. I think we go ahead and just do this for one anyway. In the event we draw, like, a Planeswalker or something, still would be worth it. 
Actually, it'd be more than worth it. Oh, was not expecting to see an inspiring overseer. That changes things. That's interesting. Huh. Definitely not what I expected to see. All right, I guess we're just gonna to ferry up, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense to do anything else. Back up to ferry. All right. We do get the silver scrutiny, so that's not bad either. Hopefully we can draw land, because scrutiny for four would be pretty epic. Adeline, sure. All right, well, we have other plans now. I think we're going to try and just resolve a Gix's command instead. Because that seems much better. So yeah, let's do that. Let's have the opponent sacrifice their thing, destroy all the small things. We'll make a 2-2 two -two duder. Attack for three. Nice to see a familiar face. I doubt we're gonna get Sunfall, but I don't know. Everybody's playing Sunfall and Farewell, it seems like, so it could still happen. We did have to give up a land or a token there that was some mana. That was not inconsequential. Okay, found another land, so that's great. The opponent has, I'm assuming, blue mana in there for some reason, but so far it's playing like a mono-white type deck, but I don't necessarily want to risk the silver scrutiny here. So since we're only going to do it for three anyway, I'm willing to wait. And let's just do this. Mostly in case for some reason I have to combat trick to make it big enough or something. We at least are pumping another creature while we're at it. All right. And the turn. Vanquish the Horde. You got it. That's a weird choice with the deck that they're playing, but you know what? Sure. This is what I'm saying right now. There's like so many sweepers. People are just playing everything and it's so wild. All right, another Teferi. Uh, you know what? Are we going to try to breach next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm just trying to decide if Awake in the Woods is better here. I think we just go for another Teferi. We even have one more backup if necessary. No matter the time or place, I'm ready to win. All right. It's nice to see a familiar face. I mean, if they go for it again, they go for it again. I won't let a few thugs threaten this city. All right, what you got? Like I said, very weird they were playing Vanquish, but, you know, here we are. Okay, maybe we don't breach here yet. Let's cost the opponent a Planeswalker. So we're not getting any more unnecessary stuff out of her we're gonna go ahead and just draw a card here that's nifty we're gonna attack i mean if you're not chump blocking here i don't know what you're doing uh yeah let's just end the turn mm -mm -mm. what are we gonna be trying to reanimate you can get anything right okay sure Let's see what they find. I think now we can just breach and not care. We've reached that point now. Actually, we can probably just kill the opponent, too. Because we can make them sacrifice a thing. We can get rid of whatever token's in the way. And then draw a card, draw a card. Play the other Teferi. Uh, that costs four to do its thing, right? Yeah, okay. Sure, so let's try to shoot that for one. Uh, 
And then we'll go ahead and try to get rid of Elspeth. And then we'll draw. Then we'll draw. Now that is an interesting. Then we'll attack, and that'll do it. All right, well, the one thing I will say about this list is that I'm not sure what I would uh, really cut here. I mean, I, I'm you know I'm notorious for playing 61 cards, but I think we could actually cut the Celestis here. Oddly, I do like the card, but. If I was going to play 61 still, I'd probably just play another Terra Sunder. Terra Sunder's still good against, like, the the Celestia Enchantments list. It's good against other Planeswalkers. It just gets rid of a lot of things. And the fact that it exiles is so strong. So, I would probably do that. Because we really didn't have color issues except for maybe once for, like, a turn in one game. So, our lands are pretty good at providing all the different colors that we want. So, I don't think that's the problem. I would just be more concerned with just having more ways to buy time to get to these Planeswalkers and stuff and be able to end the game. Maybe even play another Silver Scrutiny if you wanted to. But anyway, our list is two Dig Up, two Shielded's Edict, four Azusa's Mini Journeys, one Terra Sunder. Like I said, could be two. I would recommend just cutting the Celestis. Four Invasion of Zendikar, three Teferi Temporal Pilgrim, two Gix's Command, one Vraska Betrayal Sting, Four, Breach the Multiverse. Three, Nessa Ascendant Animus. Three, March of the Wretched Sorrow. Three, or two, Silver Scrutiny. And four, Awake in the Woods. Four, Awake in the Woods felt like a little bit much, but even if you're just doing it for two or three, there's a lot of benefit. But then lands, we had one island, an Ottawara, three swamp, a Takanuma, Beseju, five forests, two Darklick Shore, two Shipwreck Marsh, three Deathcap Glade, two... Lanamore Waste, one Dream Root Cascade, and three Yavamaya Coast. But yeah, I think the list could get away, like I said, with probably one less Awake in the Woods, one more Silver Scrutiny. Even if you wanted to swap a dig up for something else. One of the things that's good about the list, though, is that there's a lot of room for variation. There's a bunch of different cards you can play in it that can give you, you know, consistency for searching stuff, whether you want to draw more cards. Maybe you want to play other Planeswalkers. You want to stick like a Soren or something in there to give you some extra life gain. Like there's a few different options and I kind of like that about the deck. And because we had so many different ramp options in green, it actually didn't make it hurt too much. I kind of enjoyed this. It was similar to one we played before, but now being able to ramp up a little bit more, let you work in Breach and that's even better. So yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. This one's actually a pretty fun one. It was really, really powerful. Now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Mostly because this was probably, of all the Planeswalkers we play against, one of my most hated. Though, to be fair, I kind of hate the new 6-mana Wandering Emperor or whatever. That one was pushing it for me. But, man, Ugin, and even when I played with it, Ugin just didn't feel fun. Like, just playing it and then wiping out all the creatures, and then you're just, like, damaging the opponent every turn after that. Like, this card was so good. Now, admittedly, it does cost kind of a lot, so, I mean, there is that. But, I mean, even if you compare this to something like Kaya, th that has m multiple colors of mana in the cost and still costs that much, like, Ugin is so good. But yeah, really, really cool card, and it's still going for a decent amount of money. I don't think you can find these for under, like, 10 or $12 right now, so people are still digging it. Even though it's not particularly legal in any format, I imagine this is still wreaking havoc at kitchen tables. And if you like ramping up to really big things, I do have a gruel list that we ramped up to play huge Italis and other big stuff. So check that out. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.